Thank you so much for joining me. As you can probably tell from the introduction, uh, this channel is all about learning from my mistakes. I have a very moderate level of skill. I love what I do. I love making stuff and I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to get better. So I thought it might be fun to share my experiences with you and that sometimes we can go through projects together and you can learn from what I get wrong. So maybe hopefully you won't get it wrong. I had to choose something to start with as a first project for this channel. And I went straight to this book, Engineers Workshop Projects by Harold Hall. Harold Hall is one of those strange geniuses who has over the years designed the most extraordinary tools for horology and general model engineering. And these books are priceless. And I, I've been very conscious of not going against copyright or, or taking anything away from Harold Hall. And I really hope that you will buy this book if you want to make this project. It's not expensive. It's in the workshop, uh, the workshop practice series. They're very cheap and they're fantastic. However, if you're a beginner like me or a near beginner, uh, some of the plans and everything are, are, are quite tricky to get to grips with. So I thought it might be good to have somebody who kind of, you know, we could hold each other's hands going through this project and it might help. And the first project I'm going to do is Harold Hall's tapping stand. And if this doesn't show up in the video, I'll take a photograph. It's a brilliant version of something that there are plenty of on YouTube, which is a guide to help you tap a hole accurately and perpendicularly. Now, of course, the problem when you tap is that there are so many angles at which you can go wrong. When you go down, they can, you know, the 360 degrees that can go wrong. The beauty of Harold Hall's design is that it's designed so that as you turn the tap, it screws down at a set speed because it's got a, a, a screw to guide it down, guide the tap down, which is brilliant. So that's why I wanted to do this project. It's not the simplest project and um, it does require some machining. It requires a little bit of skill and a bit of practice, but hopefully if I make the mistakes, you won't. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to try and distill what he does, distill his plans, and then make it palatable and useful. If you like this video, please say like. If you like what I'm trying to do, please subscribe. If you don't like, press don't like, but also hopefully give me some constructive criticism for what I might do better next time, what you're, what's not good enough, what could be better. Anyway, I really hope you enjoy it. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the materials that we need. I've got, by the way, this is important. I haven't pre-made this and then disassembled it to make it again. I've literally, I haven't started yet. All I've done is I've ordered all the bits and pieces that he says I need in this book. So that's going to be the next stage is to look at the raw materials. So I'm now I'm back in the workshop and here are the pieces that I described earlier, um, which have all arrived. And so the bright mild steel, we've got the 20 by 10, we've got the 70 by 10, we've got the 40 by 20, and we've got the 40 by 40. So these are the, the flat stock, and then we've got the 25 mil round, 16 mil round, 12 mil round, and 10 mil round. Now the only thing is I hope I bought enough of it all, but hopefully we, um, we've, got, we've got it. And then we have the screws. So we have the grub screws, the three different sizes um, that um, Harold Hall says are required, and also all the cap screws, socket cap screws. So if I got it right, if I followed the plans properly, this is everything we're going to need. Um, and I just hope I have enough of it all. So, let's get started, I think. So, I've decided that I was going to start with um, the part that he calls 17. So, these ones here. These are the ones where um, the screw holes are actually offset from center, are seven millimeter from the center. Um, I'm starting with these two, and the other one, part number 16, which is this one over here, so another view of these parts here, uh, which I hope you can see. I hope this all works uh, and focuses properly. Um, it'll be this one, which is part 
16 and these two that go down the back of the base um, and here if it focuses I hope it focuses um, there are these here um, so yeah so that's what I'm going to start doing so basically I need to cut three pieces of this um, 20 by 10 170 mil so that's going to be the next job which I'm going to do now okay so let's get this baby in there sure that we're good yeah I don't care if I'm not perfectly accurate on this because uh, I can always um, readjust the lengths on incredibly precise don't have to be incredibly precise but I do want it to be very square, however. And I just want to say that if anybody, any of you uh, haven't invested in one of these, they're not that expensive compared to other machinery. And my God, they are a lifesaver. Actually, that's gone short. There you go, it's all started to go wrong. So as I mentioned before, I'm actually going to use uh, the one I've cut just now to try and fix this in position. Um, so here it's lying against the blade and here this will mean that the next cuts will be at the right distance. And I should have a pretty good stab at making that 170 mil without too much panic I will because I'm rather belt some braces double check anyway bang on excellent okay right well I don't have to film me cutting the extra three pieces you've seen the idea so um, I'll, I'll join me back when I've cut them so actually I'm quite pleased with these they, they've turned out pretty well they're pretty good length um, they're not perfect and I think part of that is because uh, they, the edges are a bit rough after the sawing. Um, I've rubbed one of them um, on my little unimat here which is uh, great. I'm going to do a bit more. pretty good okay so next thing is we're going to mark them up and get ready for drilling okay so the first thing I'm going to do of course is to um, mark this seven millimeter um, offset Let's 
one. And there's the second. And then the next thing I'm going to mark is a 10 millimeter offset. <clears throat> I don't think we're at a point point oh two of a millimeter. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to measure the holes this way. Um, that way, I'm sure that they're going to be the same. If I do it from both edges, it doesn't mean that I'm guaranteed So great. That's marked. Now I'm going to mark oh, the light's gone a bit. There we go. So now I'm going to use a compass and I'm going to mark out the next distances from each point and that way I hope I'll stay reasonably accurate. I personally like a compass more than dividers for this because um, I don't know I find them more accurate. So the first thing we need from this hole to that hole is a 30 millimeter distance. There, that'll be the first one. I'm going to mark these, and the reason I'm going to uh, make the holes now is so that I know I'm accurate to the hole, hopefully, and not to just the compass mark. There's no my drilling, that could all go completely wrong. There you go. So these are the points marked 10, 30, 25, 40, 25, 30. Okay, so now we'll be drilling. Right, so I'm now at, uh, at my pillar drill. And uh, these are the parallels I'm going to use in the vise. I know a lot of people are very tempted not to um, use a vise when they're drilling. Um, I think that's a very bad idea. It can lead to some very nasty accidents as the drill bit goes through the steel. Um, it can turn into a helicopter blade. And um, it only has to happen once and it would not be funny. Um, so I am being good, I'm going to use a vise, 
and I'm starting with a center drill bit to get these holes in position um, so that eventually my drill doesn't make any give me nasty surprises so let's go for this and okay here we go personal preference but I don't like to um, I don't like to go in too deep with the center drill bit um, to be honest with you I find that uh, they snap pretty bloody easily and um, that is a real nightmare if your center drill bit snaps because that's really it you can't really get it out again um, Very little pressure, very light pressure. Okay. Right, so there are the uh, the guide holes gone in. Uh, they seem to be pretty okay. So I think now it's time to switch over to uh, to a drill bit. Um, I'm going to try one. I like to go up in sizes with drill bits. So I'm going to see how a three. I mean, ultimately our hole is going to be 4.2, according to Harold. Um, but I'd like to see I'm going to start with this three three mil
there. So that's the sort of guide holes drilled, and I'm going to go up. I've now put the 42 millimeter drill bit in there, and I'm just going to finish off these holes to the dimensions that Howard Hall recommends, which I think is anyway is exactly the right size for a M4 bolt to go through. ready to receive an M4 bolt and now of course these have to be flush with this so we now need to counterbore these holes to a uh, I mean I think this is about 3.9 mil and we're going to counterbore it to 4.5 Okay, so I've just uh, encountered a slight, my first issue here is this is the counterbore bits that, or one of the counterbore bits that I bought and the guide of the bit does not fit in the 4.2 mil hole. So it, I measured it. And it's actually nearly 4.5. Now, that's, I'm not totally happy with that, but anyway, it is what it is. So what I'm going to do is I've, I'm going to change to a 4.5 mil um, bit and re-drill the holes 4.5 because I don't want any seizing up as I do the counter-boring. So that's what I'm going to do next. So the other issue I've got to contend with is that I can only, I'm only supposed to um, counter-bore about 4.5 mil and I know this is 10 mil uh, thick, but the the gauge on my drill press to uh, judge the distance down is not working. So I'm gonna have to do it a little bit by trial and error, which means that I'm going to countersink, put the bolt in, see if it fits, build, drill a bit more, etc., etc. Now I'm gonna take this super slowly. Um, so I'll film, I'll film it, but at the same time, I will probably speed the video up when I actually come to um, edit it. And let's see how bingo. Okay, that'll do. Lovely. All right. So they're not going to be very even, but at least I know it's working. So I'm going to keep doing that. Remember, one of the important things that I, I was doing, I was going very, very slowly. And also I was taking the bit out quite frequently to, to get rid of the swarf because that is the most likely place where the counterbore is going to get seized up. So it's very important to keep um, um, getting rid of the swarf. One thing I'm going to do however is I'm going to measure just to see how deep I was there. Uh, 5.8 so in fact I've gone much deeper than I need as we saw when the bolt went in so that's good because I know for next time now. All right. So in the last segment, I said that I didn't really care if that was too deep. And of course, that is an issue. And um, again, a good chance of learning from my mistakes, because if the counterbore is too deep, the screw is then going to be too long to fit into the um, the hole on the retaining bar. So I'll, I'll live with it on this one. But now I'm going to do it much more gently, go down in increments so that I don't have that issue again and be a little bit more scientific. However, I'm not going to film all that because that's going to take forever. So uh, let me show you the final result when it's done. Right, so um, I hope that's not going to be a problem. It turned out to be extremely difficult to get the distance 
by eye, so to speak, of the counterbores on this. Um, I don't know if you can see. Um, I hope this will focus. But um, basically, maybe I should have done it on my mill. Um, but we should be all right. I don't think it's going to be a tragedy, but it's something to bear in mind when you're, if you if you try this. Um, but anyway, we're going to carry on. I'm not going to film doing the uh, its counterpart because it's basically going to be the same again. Uh, I'll just try and be even more careful on that one. Okay, I've done both of these now. And what's left to be done to them, I think, is I'm going to grind the backs of them to get some of that burr off. Otherwise, I'm going to slice my finger every five minutes. And then next, I'm going to do the one at the front, which is the one where the holes are drilled down the middle. But I'm going to have the same counter-boring problem. And certainly you'll find this operation much easier if your drill press or anything you have can be measured to a depth when you're drilling or counter-boring. But I'm working with what I've got and I can't be, I don't think actually doing it on the milling machine would have been that much easier anyway. Uh, so that'll be my next operation really, is to do that one. So I'm about to start <coughs> um, drilling these outer pieces. Um, now, this side is very simple, it, they're 10 in and 10 uh, that way, and they're, in fact they're all drilled down the center line, but it's 7 mil from that side to that side, and then 26 mil from there to there. Now, these will all be tapped M4, and very crucially, they can only be drilled and tapped to a depth of 7 millimeters. The other thing I wanted to uh, just talk about, a couple of things. One is something I learned the hard way when using Dicom fluid or anything like this. Um, be careful not to use too much of it. And the reason for that is that sometimes it's quite tempted to, tempting to paint the entire thing in a, in a nice coat of red. But the problem is that when you then mark it, what you're doing is you're just tearing off the liquid as opposed to marking the steel and that means that eventually you'll have quite invisible lines so that was a very useful tip that I was taught is is uh, painted on thinly um, and I have tried to resolve the situation with my pillar drill in terms of being able to uh, drill to a particular depth and I, I think I have fixed it so that, that I was getting very concerned about that because I I just couldn't afford to to make all that ad hoc um, so we'll look at that in a little bit but for now um, I'm just going to mark up these four pieces which are as I say the, the four outside pieces so if you imagine this is where we're at so far it's going to be the pieces that go here 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 and here to complete the base So since I'm going to be um, uh, tapping these holes to uh, M4, I'm going to have to drill the holes to 3.2 or 3.3 millimeter um, so the tap is effective. And just to make sure I'm really accurate, I'm going to start with a, a smallish center drill uh, <clears throat> just to make sure that the, the holes start um, correctly. So I'm not going to film all of this, but just to show a little bit. So I've mentioned previously that I was having a problem with my pillar drill um, and its depth stop, but I since found out that actually that was pure human error. So I've now, uh, I'm now in a position to show you how to do that if you don't already know. So I've marked a line here at seven, meters de seven millimeters depth 
in the steel, which is what I have to do, and I'm going to get it to the correct depth. which I'm eyeballing here, and then I'm going to set that depth on the drill, which I'm going to show you in a second how to do. So this is the business end on the, on the pillar drill, and um, I hope you can see this for a lot of people, they will know how to do this, this is for those who don't. So you'll see that there is this um, uh, graduated ring on the pillar drill, and this bolt. So the first thing to do is to get the drill down to the depth that you want and then I've already done it so I'm going to undo it now and then you get once you're happy with the depth you turn this dial until it marks zero now that basically is where your drill is going to stop once you've tightened this bolt and stop at zero which means that the hole will stop at the required depth. So as I mentioned I have set the depth to the correct depth. See that probably can't actually but that is now drilled to seven millimeters so I'm going to now do that to all the holes and then we will move on to the tapping later that so now I'm going to do this with all the others and, um, and I'll catch up with you after <clears throat> okay so <clears throat> I've put the whole thing together as a sort of dummy <clears throat> put together and I'm delighted to say that it all fits um, very important when you do this two things well very important at least useful to remember I counterboard some of these holes too deep so that the 12 millimeter M4 bolts that, uh, or, or screws that uh, Harold Hall suggests are too long um, because the counter bore is too deep, therefore it can't go far enough inside the uh, receiving part. So be adaptable with that. If you've made the same mistake as me, just use 10 millimeter uh, uh, screws, which, which worked fine in my case. The other thing I would recommend is that you don't over tighten all the screws when you're putting it together because they'll need a little bit of movement unless you're much, much more accurate than I am. Um, they, it all fits. I'm, I'm really pleased with it. There are a couple of things that I'm a bit perplexed about. It's why it doesn't fit quite along here. There's a sort of gap here and a gap there, um, which is odd because I measured it all very carefully, but these are the, the, the way things are. Um, and this is what it looks from the top. These are the screws that fell out because these are, are going to be going into the, the column uh, base. Um, anyway, that's what it looks like. I'm going to give it a clean and a polish 
and that'll be the end of part one. Um, so I hope you'll join me for part two when we start constructing the column.